an auto fix pile. Today we have a 2007 Nissan Xterra with a no start condition. Damn. The engine will crank, but it will not start. Uh. Um, the problem with this car is that we're missing fuel. And that's what this video is about right now. We're going to find out why we're missing fuel. And we're going to show you some techniques that I use to diagnose a no fuel problem. Yeah. First thing we're going to do is scan the engine for some DTCs. And we will find a P0300 DTC in here because one of the methods I used to verify that the car was not getting fuel was to supply it with fuel. I simply took a can of brake cleaner and sprayed it into the intake manifold and had someone crank the engine. If the engine starts, that means that you are missing fuel, you have your spark, you have your air, you have everything you need to start the engine except for fuel. And by spraying the brake cleaner into the intake manifold, well, you supplied the engine with fuel to start and the engine will start. So, what we need to figure out is why we do not have a fuel supply going to this engine while it's cranking. And the method that I used to get the um, brake cleaner into the engine was simply to unplug a vacuum line. You can see this vacuum line right there. That's what I unplugged and just stuck my little straw from the brake cleaner can into that hole. Sprayed it in there, cranked the engine, and the engine fired right up. The next thing we are going to do is disconnect the fuel supply line at the fuel rail and insert it into a container and um, see if we get any fuel pressure, see if we got any fuel coming out of that fuel line. I suspect we should have zero fuel pressure whatsoever. Um, it's probably a better idea to have a fuel gauge. You can use a fuel gauge if you have one around. I do have a fuel gauge, but right now all I want to see if I have if I have any pressure at all. So I'm just going to skip the fuel gauge and just see if there's any flow whatsoever. I don't think there's any flow, but we'll see. But before we do that, we'll want to go back into our scan tool and then go into the active test section so that we can energize the fuel pump relay manually. We can go ahead and skip this part because we don't need to monitor any PIDs since the car doesn't start. So there's no PIDs to monitor. So what we'll do is just go into the um, active, to active test section and we will turn the fuel pump on and off right there as you can see me doing in the screen and um, we'll see if we can actually hear the fuel pump come on so we'll do that first go into the car listen for the fuel pump didn't hear it and then we'll go to the um, fuel filler neck see if we can hear it over at the fuel filler neck and that yielded the same results we didn't hear anything so the next thing we're going to do is disconnect the fuel line Stick it into a bucket and see if we have any fuel coming out when we activate the fuel pump relay using the active test in the scan tool. Using the Nissan fuel line disconnect tool, we're going to take the fuel line out and stick it into a bucket. As you can see right there, we got the fuel line sticking in the bucket. And we're going to activate the um, fuel pump relay using the scanner with the active test section, the active test function. And as you can see, we've got no fuel coming out. Now let's show you what we got on the screen. You can see the fuel pump relay is turned on, but we have absolutely no fuel coming out of that fuel line. So let's move on to the next step. According to our wire diagram from Mitchell, this is a typical and simple fuel pump circuit. Power side is controlled by the fuel pump relay, and you have a constant ground that's located on the left side of the engine compartment. And so let's find out what we can do under the hood as far as checking power to this fuel pump. Go to the next page and see where we are let's go back over two pages because this is a red wire let's zoom in but we can't see that this is the red wire the power wire for the fuel pump and let's go into the next page which is where the um, fuel pump relay is located All right, this is the fuel pump relay right here. It is ground side control via this violet wire and that violet wire goes to the ECM. When fuel is needed, this wire is grounded by the ECM and energizes this coil in the relay and it closes the circuit which is fed by this fuse 48 which is a 15 amp fuse and that is located in the IPDM which is the intelligent power distribution module. It is on the right rear of the engine compartment located right over there. And um, this wire right here is just is the control side and that is hot and on or the run position. Hot and on or start. 
All right, so um, we should have power right here when the fuel pump is commanded on. And we can do that with the um, Autel maxi -Sys scanner. We can command that fuel pump relay to turn on. So what we'll do is we'll hook up our test light here, turn that relay on, and see if we have power there. This should prove that this relay is good. This will prove that everything in this section here is working properly. We'll still have to prove out this circuit right here going all the way to the fuel pump itself, which is the red wire. And if we prove that we have power here, then um, that means we have a good circuit here as well on the violet wire. That means the computer is in control of the fuel pump relay, so we don't have to test this. That circuit is fine. All right, so let's go ahead and check for power right here at, the, um, at this red wire coming out of the fuel pump relay. Actually, the next step we should take is to check the fuse, because if our fuse is blown for the fuel pump, then we need to figure out why the fuse is blowing. So let's do that first and make sure we have power going into the relay by checking that fuel pump fuse. Alright, according to the cover, the fuel pump fuse should be the seventh one from the bottom according to that um, IPDM cover. And it's a 15 amp fuse and you can see it looks like it's good. So let's move on to the next step and find that red wire and check for power output at that red wire while we're turning the fuel pump relay on. All right, this is the wiring that's going to the IPDM, the Intelligent Power Distribution Module. And we have a red wire right here, like according to the wiring diagram that's coming out of the fuel pump relay. You can see it right there. However, when you look at this IPDM, you'll see that there's quite a few red wires there. There's a lot of red wires all over the place. But since that red wire seems to be the closest to all of our relays, and I don't know which relay is which because it's not labeled, but um, that red wire is the closest to this relay cluster over there. And not only that, but it's about the same thickness as what you would find typically on a power wire for a fuel pump. So we're going to assume that that's the red wire and we'll check that wire and see if it acts accordingly. So we'll power up the um, fuel pump relay with the uh, maxi -sys, with the Autel maxi -sys, and see if our light comes on. If our light comes on when we power up that relay, then we can pretty much say that it's a safe bet that that's our, um, that's our power wire going to the fuel pump. All right, so let's go ahead and turn the fuel pump relay on with the scanner. And as you can see, our light is lighting up on that red wire. So it's pretty safe to say that that is the red wire going to the fuel pump. And that's the wire that we need to be testing. But um, it looks like we just tested it and everything is working great. So we turned it on and off a few times just to make sure that that's the right wire that we're on. And yeah, it's working properly. The relay is working properly. We have current through all of our circuits. So right now is an opportunity for me to test out a new tool that I purchased from Snap-on. It's called the Snap-on Multiprobe, the EECT900 or something like that. I'm not sure what it is, but um, the feature on this tool is that it has a hot shot feature. It can load test the circuit by simply pressing the button and it'll tell you if the circuit is good enough to carry your current. I think it's rated for maybe 30 amps sustainable, so if it can pass the test using this tool, that circuit can hold 30 amps of sustainable current, allegedly. So getting things set up, you'll want to scroll through the menus and then select voltage DC. And then you'll scroll through the menu on the left side using the arrows on the left. And you will select hot shot. You see it there at the top. And right there, that's hot shot. So then you'll begin your testing by putting your multi-probe on the power source for that um, fuel pump relay. Well, the power source for the fuel pump that's coming out of the fuel pump relay, which is that red wire. So I've inserted a T-pin there and I've attached my multi-probe to the T-pin. And right now it's just showing negative ground on the screen. We'll wait till we show the screen. You'll see, it. You'll see it in a second, right there. You'll see that the negative is lit up in green. That means we have a ground there. So what we're gonna do is turn on the um, fuel pump relay and we should have power there now. You'll see the red light is red up on the top. And the screen is telling us to press the negative button on the multi-probe and that's going to test that circuit. And see it says normal connection. That means that that circuit is able to sustain the current needed to power that fuel pump. So there's no issues with the wiring going all the way to the fuel pump. 
well there's no issues with the wiring right there at the relay because we didn't go back to the fuel pump and do our testing yet but right up to that point there's no issues with the relay there's no issues with that connector now before I go ahead and pull that gas tank down and check the connection at the um, fuel pump itself I want to see if I can condemn this pump right here under the hood what I'm going to do is hook up my oscilloscope with the current clamp and see if I have any activity on that circuit see if I have any current draw being pulled on that circuit while I activate the fuel pump relay if I see some type of a current draw on that circuit then that means that the wiring is probably in good condition and it should be good enough to power up a new fuel pump since we suspect that this old fuel pump is bad so let's hook up our current clamp and um, see if we have any current draw I didn't film this entire section right here but I did hook up the current clamp and I did set my setting on the oscilloscope to 500 milliseconds and you can see the screen shaking right there that's me banging on the fuel pump and you can see there's no activity whatsoever so we still have to do our checks at the fuel tank at the fuel pump and we have to check for power there because um we have no current draw no movement whatsoever on the oscilloscope and all I did was connect the current clamp around the power wire the output wire the red wire on the fuel pump relay so um, this test didn't show us anything we still got to go further now getting to the plug on the fuel pump on this vehicle is not easy I did have to lower the gas tank a little bit to reach my hand up in there and then unplug the connector and what you see me doing right now is back probing the plug the red wire is the power wire and the black wire is the ground wire you should probably not use two T-pins but um, I do want to prove out the ground wire is good and I don't have any um, back probing connectors or plugs for my leads. So I'm just going to use the T-pins right now and um, just keep them separated so that they don't touch each other and short anything out and blow your fuse. So what we're going to do right now is power up the fuel pump relay using our scanner and uh, we'll make sure that the fuel pump wiring can power up the test light. As long as it lights up the test light, then that should prove that our circuit is good. There's no issues with resistance in the wiring. And when we install the new fuel pump, our fuel pump should work and the car should start right up. Now, as you can see, the test light is lighting up. It's really bright. So we should be able to install a fuel pump in this car and this car will start right up. Shouldn't have any issues. Now, what we can do is we can further load test that circuit, but I'm pretty confident that this wiring on this car is good. All right, so the customer did approve the replacement of the fuel pump. And as you can see by looking into that connector, that pin all the way to the left is completely corroded away. Now that's the power wire for the fuel pump. Now the fuel pump inside the pump, inside the tank is probably still good, but the wiring going to that fuel pump is shot because it's corroded completely away. So um, what we're gonna do is just put this fuel pump in, get this customer going down the road, and um, that's it. We'll be done with this car. All right, so thanks for watching, Auto Fix Pal. Please like, comment, subscribe, and um, let me know what you think about this video. Any suggestions, you can leave that in the comment section as well. Thank you.